an entitled Karen demands that I work around the clock just so her needs can be met, while also stating that if I don't do exactly as she says, she's going to ensure that I get fired for not doing my job. And I've honestly never been more blown away by somebody's entitlement in my life. Here's what happened. So to start things out, I own a hot tub repair and maintenance company, and one of the services that we offer is hot tub water refills, where we truck in the water to fill the tub if the well at the house can't produce enough, or if there is a requirement. One of the wells at a home I service went dry, and this does happen sometimes, and it has a backup 500-gallon drum of water. So the property manager asked if I could fill their tank, and I said, yep, no problem. I could do that for sure. And by the way, the well still does produce water. It's just not as much as needed. So usually, if you can augment the tank, then the well will recover, and you are usually in good shape. At the time, my truck was in the shop, so I borrowed my parents' SUV, hooked up my water trailer, filled up the tank, and then transported it to their house. I would have normally declined, but the property manager was desperate, and I'm the only company in town with water transport equipment. Fast forward, and they are all good to go, and the entitled Karen of the story is set to arrive that evening. Just a day and a half later, the house has run out again. The property manager called me and asked if there was anything I could do, as well as if I could probably take a look at it. It's Sunday, and the bulk water fill location is closed, and I had no truck or ability to tow it. The property manager offered a new house for them to stay at, but the entitled parents didn't want a different house. So I took a small load of water over with my 1958 Jeep. I filled my small tank and trailer at my house and brought over 257 gallons of water. And trust me when I say this, this was a total pain in the neck. Once I arrived, the entitled Karens come out and immediately start asking why I didn't bring 500 gallons and when am I going to go get them some more. And this is all because apparently they had 18 people staying there and they all needed showers. It is a pretty big mountain home to their credit. She told me that they expect me to drive around the clock delivering water for their entire stay. By the way, if I can't fill at the bulk station and I can't use my full size trailer, this will also turn into a giant pain in the neck. It takes 40 minutes to fill the tank at my house, 20 minutes to drive and 40 minutes to transfer. 18 people consume a ton of water. For reference, if I had my truck and a full size trailer, the whole process would only take about 30 minutes. And I'm honestly so blown away by their entitled behavior as well as the things that they decided to say to me. Now, mind you, this is all because they wanted to stay in this house to have their ideal vacation. The entitled Karen then said it was my job to supply them with everything they needed for their vacation or otherwise they would make sure that I got fired. Now, I was really friendly up until this point, but that really set my teeth on edge. She then said that I should ensure that my schedule was clear for the next week just so I could support them and that I should go rent a truck to make sure that I could haul the water up to them. I honestly couldn't believe it. I was being a professional and friendly person who was just trying to help out. But after those remarks, I simply couldn't take it. So I decided to clarify with these entitled Karens about what I was and wasn't going to do. Also, their adult children were looking pretty ashamed at this point. I said that was not happening as I do not work for the management company. I'm a third party contractor who works on hot tubs. I was doing the property manager a favor by helping them out. The Karens then threatened to tell the property manager company to cancel my contract if I don't want to help them. And they implied that as someone delivering water for a business, they said that I would need the money. So when they said that, I told them, go ahead. My full-time job is in cloud technology, and this is a side business for me. I literally couldn't care less, and I was still not going to drive around the clock to do that when they could just move to another property. There was some back and forth, but I finally told them that they would be stupid to try and stay here, and that the experience they wanted to have in this house just wasn't going to happen. I then went home and had a couple of beers and enjoyed the rest of my Sunday. Apparently, the next morning they moved to another house, and also the property manager gave them a full refund so that their trip was completely free. Wow, those people were absolutely super entitled. They seriously expected you to work around the clock just to try and make them specifically happy? Like seriously, they are unbelievably entitled and that is so inappropriate. Like in all honesty, you just don't treat people like that. You don't look at them and be like, wow, if you don't do this, I'm going to get you fired. That is never going to get anything accomplished. And if I was in this guy's shoes, I would have told him right then and there, no, I'm not doing it. Go ahead and try and get me fired. I'm not going to be talked to like that. And this was all just because they weren't getting their way. This guy was being professional and very friendly. He was doing everything he could to help out this property manager as well as the client staying on his property. He wasn't malicious or in any way neglectful to what is going 
on, and he was literally doing the best he could with the stuff presented in front of him. So truly, these entitled Karens are absolute jerks. The way they talked to the original poster was so inappropriate, and I don't blame you for walking out and refusing to help these people. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. An entitled customer demands a cash refund from a gift card, but after explaining to her several times that it simply doesn't work that way, she refuses to take no for an answer, eventually resulting in me needing to call the police just to get her to leave our store. Here's what happened. I have seen a lot of crazy people, but this one was one of my favorites. I used to manage a popular sporting store, and one day a customer bought a tent. The cashier who sold it to her texted me the next night saying she was acting really sketchy and paid with a gift card from the same kind of tent she just returned. She would come back a few days later asking for a refund, which was like, sure, no big deal, I just need her receipt. But she doesn't have it. I asked for the credit card or the debit card, and after dodging the question several times, she admits she paid with a gift card. Again, no big deal. I can just put it back on the gift card itself. But this is where an all-out nightmare breaks loose. She starts raising her voice, saying this is the second tent she purchased from us that didn't work, and that because her son had football practice over the weekend, she had to purchase a third tent from another retailer, and she wanted me to cash out her purchase to make up for what she spent at the other store. I told her absolutely not. She gets mad and tries to do a third exchange. I told her that we can't do that either. She was obviously trying to receipt launder. She already bought two tents and returned them claiming that they were damaged, and now she's trying again, and every time she just loses her receipt because she's hoping the cashier doesn't notice and will give her cash or return to a credit card or something like that. Our system doesn't work that way, and after several exchanges, it will only offer her a gift card, and a manager override can't get past that. She tried everything. She blamed us for selling faulty tents. She blamed the cashier for not doing the first return right. She called corporate demanding that I get fired because I wouldn't honor a gift card cash value, while also claiming that I told her to leave the store at some point. Eventually, she refused to get out of line and started spewing nonsense about U.S. law from the 1960s that apparently magically said that gift cards are legal tender, and I had to reimburse her for her troubles. I explained multiple times that no one forced her to purchase a third tent from another retailer, and that there was zero option for me to give her cash. She then, with a perfectly serious expression, asked me why I couldn't just pull some money out of the register and write it down that I refunded her like on a piece of paper or something like that. I calmly told her that that was illegal. I would get fired and that she can't get cash for a gift card. I then said that unless she has any other business, we would like to take care of other customers. She refused to get out of line and started getting aggressive to us. So I called the cops right in front of her and she would stay inside just a little bit longer until eventually she left absolutely fuming. Eventually the cops show up and they made sure that she left the parking lot just so she couldn't bother us or the store any longer. She never did get a refund, but she did leave a really nice review saying I didn't know the laws of this country. And honestly, with all things considered, that is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, that lady was being really weird. Like, she was very obviously trying to get money out of this situation, and she just wasn't taking no for an answer. Like, seriously, it's time to, like, take a chill pill and just calm down. There's no reason to act like this. And I'm right there with the original poster. You could see literally right through this lady because you knew exactly what she was trying to do. She was trying to scam you guys out of your money. Even going as far as being like, wow, just pulled out of the cash register. It'll be fine. Like, what did she expect for you to just write like an IOU down in the cash register and your store and managers would somehow think that's fine? Like, no, that's not allowed. That's very illegal. And you're just going to get in trouble. So good for you for standing up for yourself and not taking that for a second, because this customer was clearly trying to work the system. And if they had gotten their way, there's a very high likelihood that you would have been fired. Am I the jerk for confronting my sister-in-law after she tried to act like the mother of my child? Here's what happened. So I am in a complex situation that I never thought I would find myself in. My husband and I decided to pursue surrogacy as we are unable to conceive on our own due to medical reasons. His sister, let's call her Sarah, that's not her real name, is 45 years old and has graciously offered to be our surrogate. And we are overjoyed. She has two children of her own whose births went smoothly. So we thought it wouldn't be a burden on her body. And since she was healthy, we agreed to go further with the process. Fast forward to six months ago when our beautiful baby girl was born. We were beyond grateful to Sarah for her incredible gift to us. And that's when things 
things really started to get tricky. Sarah seemed to become extremely possessive of the baby, acting like she was the mother. Whenever she would come over to our house, she insisted on being present for diaper changing, as well as feeding and nap time. At first, I had no problem with this, but I told her it would be better for her to rest, having just given birth recently, but she insisted on helping out. But then things started changing. She constantly started telling me how to take care of the baby, as she has a lot more experience than I do. She acts like she knows what's best for our child more than we do. She even started referring to the baby as her baby in front of our friends and family, all during family gatherings, and constantly reminds them that she birthed my baby and tells people about my fertility issues, saying how unfortunate it is. Now, naturally, this has caused tension between my husband and myself. I've attempted to talk to my husband about it, and while he acknowledges that her behavior can be overbearing, he didn't want to confront her because he's afraid it will strain their relationship. He thinks we owe her too much to criticize her actions. But despite this, I finally decided to have a conversation with Sarah about her behavior. I expressed my gratitude for her surrogacy, but explained that this was causing confusion and stress for our family. I tried to explain how her actions were making me feel overwhelmed and that I wanted to establish boundaries as it's my baby. She then became emotional and accused me of not being appreciative of everything that she has done for us, reminding me that she is the reason we have a child in the first place. She said I was not understanding the bond she had developed with the baby during the pregnancy. After the argument, I noticed how some of my husband's side of the family has started treating me differently, as well as looking at me differently. I feel so stressed out now, and honestly, I don't know what to do. I don't think you're the jerk at all. I think Sarah is having trouble adjusting to the reality of the situation, and she really needs a little bit of help. And I'm referring to, like, professional help of some kind. Like, seriously, this lady is not acting right in the head and for her to basically imply no this is my baby they just had me give birth to it because she can't have children that in my opinion is really weird like just look at the behavior that she's been exhibiting from the diaper changing to feeding and nap time her just insisting to be there that is honestly really weird and for her to claim ownership over the baby in front of friends and family is completely over the line I honestly don't blame you for confronting her this behavior is incredibly inappropriate I mean personally I wouldn't have picked somebody in the family to birth your child. I mean, that's a big mistake in my opinion. I would have found literally anybody else besides, you know, your husband's sister. That's really weird in my opinion, and that is just a recipe for disaster. So overall, in my opinion, no, you are not the jerk. And I honestly think that Sarah's at fault in this situation. An entitled Karen demands to use my phone in the store that I work at. And when I say no, she straight up complains to the customer service desk, lying about how I was refusing her service. And I'm honestly so done with Karen like this. Here's what happened. So this happened some time ago, but the absolute audacity of the entire exchange has cemented the encounter into my core memories. I was working retail at the time when a woman comes up to me and asks to use my phone. At first, I didn't immediately think, oh my gosh, this is a Karen. I simply looked at her and in my best customer service voice, I said to her, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't let you use my phone, but you can use the phone at the customer service counter just over there. And I literally pointed at the counter 10 feet away. After this, she then morphs into the Karen. She looks at me and says, so you won't let me use your phone? I say to her again, I'm sorry ma'am, no. The customer service desk is over there. Now, I start to explain a little bit more, but she interrupts me before I can finish my sentence. She looks at me and says, you're refusing to help me? I say to her, no ma'am, I'm not. There is a phone at the customer service desk right there that you can use. When I repeatedly refused to give her my phone, she went over to the customer service desk, but she didn't make the call that she needed that was apparently so important that I had to surrender my phone to her just to get it done. Instead, I could hear her complaining about me and see her pointing in my direction, likely telling the story about how the big meanie associate blatantly refused to help a customer in need. But the complaint didn't go her way and no one came over to reprimand me for my terrible customer service. The Karen walked out of the store, making sure to tell me in all her Karen displeasure, I hope one day you're stranded on the side of the road and no one helps you. So honestly, to that I say, have the the day that you deserve, because at the end of the day, you're still just going to be a Karen. Wow, that's an awful thing to say to somebody. Like, first off, if this really was an emergency, why did she not run over to the customer service desk? Like, if she's really trying to insinuate that she's in some kind of danger or some kind of, like, emergency situation, then she is clearly handling this really well. Like, I would be freaking out if I needed a phone desperately. I would go in whatever direction somebody pointed, just so I could make a phone call. And then she goes around and says, I hope you get stranded on the side of the road and no one helps you. Like, okay, Karen, got it. So she 
not only demanded somebody's phone to make a phone call, but then she didn't even make the phone call after she didn't get her way the first time. Like seriously, this lady is not that bright. So good for you for not handing over your phone. There's no way in the world I would have done that either, because this Karen very likely could have taken off with it, and then you would have never seen it ever again. An entitled Karen hates the fact that I'm wearing a mask at the store I work in. So this lady decides to go crazy and starts coughing on literally everything. And I've never been more blown away by someone's stupidity in my life. Here's what happened. So I am a short female who works overnights at a gas station alone three to five nights out of the week. I wear a mask because to be blunt, people absolutely stink. People stink of all kinds of things and I'm oversensitive to any kind of sense. I've had homeless people come in and clearly they have not bathed. Or some older people who smell like a brewery buying more cases of booze. And listen, I don't judge. They can buy their booze and lotto all they'd like. They come in with at least a decent attitude and I'll return it. But thankfully, I have an awesome manager who knows I can and will throw a bad attitude back in the customer's face when it calls for it. And this night just so happened to be one such night. This was a couple of weeks back at this point and I'll admit I'm still upset at this lady for doing this. It was around 2 o'clock in the morning when this skinny short lady comes in and I noticed that she had hospital bands on her wrist. Now, this isn't that uncommon. There's one a few blocks away, so this station is likely on her way home. I have a pang of sympathy for her. She's likely exhausted and probably emotionally drained, so I'm expecting to hear her vent and let it go in one ear and out the other, as I've done a few dozen times at this point. Well, no. She notices my mask and begins asking me about it in a really nasty attitude. She says to me, why are you wearing a mask? You know those things don't work right? I immediately decided to just stonewall her and dropping the customer service voice, I sternly said to her, what I'm wearing isn't of your concern. And then I just go about the transaction, ignoring her remarks as well as a few of her insults. As I'm grabbing her cigarettes, I hear her cough. Now again, she has hospital bands on, so I didn't think anything of it at first. Clearly she's at least semi-sensible and is coughing away from me, right? Well, nope. She continues to cough and as I glance over while I'm bagging her items, she is coughing on the card reader and the displays on the counter. She leans to the lotto scanner and coughs more. Now, at this point, I'm getting mad, but I still remain silent. It's not until she's leaning over the counter, nearly into my face to cough on the register and me, that a switch just flips inside my brain. I grab the bottle of disinfectant and I just start spraying. I sprayed the counter, the card reader, her purse, the outside of the bag, and her items, and even her shirt. I was aware enough to not even risk spraying her face, but she was still coughing on literally everything. She moved to the newspaper rack, the drink cooler, even the door looking like a toddler marking her territory. She ended it by grabbing a basket display of snacks and chocolate and flinging it across the floor while also saying, have fun cleaning that up, witch. Just wait till I tell your manager. I'm her friend, you know. Now, to admit it, I had been screaming at this point for this woman to get out of my store, and the entire time I was doing that, I was spraying things down as well as her. I was shaking mad, and I yelled back at her, do it, tell her. I'm gonna tell her myself after this which is exactly what I did. I texted my manager immediately after she left. I cleaned up the display and wiped down everything she coughed on very carefully, as careful as I could. I had to take anti-anxiety medication just to take away the panic attack, which was slowly coming to the surface after the anger subsided. Jumping forward to the morning when my manager arrived, and I was expecting her to at least be upset as I told her everything that happened. I was certain I'd at least get written up, but instead, this woman hands me a coffee from Starbucks and says, to me, she was lucky I wasn't in here and just left it right at that. I saw her days after and got the chance to point her out to the other staff, so now everybody knows that she made a biological attack as we dumped it onto the store. I don't really know if she's ever been back after that though, since she hasn't come overnight ever again. Wow, that lady seriously has problems. She was running around the store trying to cough on everything. Like, this is just really weird behavior and there's no reason to act like that. She's also trying to claim to be the manager's friend. Like, seriously, Seriously, the manager needs new friends. Her friend is absolutely insane. She was coughing all over the place. All because the original poster was wearing a mask. Like seriously, who does that? What grown adult would seriously start throwing things around and be like, ooh, I'm gonna tell your manager. Like lady, you're crazy. You need to get out of here. Those hospital bans were probably for the psychiatric ward. So truly good for you for standing up for yourself and refusing to take that for a second. If I was in your place, I would be furious with this lady. I would seriously be losing my mind at the way she was acting. Acting. But you handled this like a pro. You got aggressive when you needed to, and it really did make all the difference in getting this weird entitled Karen out the door. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe,
subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.